Good evening, good evening everyone who have joined us today on Facebook and on YouTube. Welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church, Wednesday night Bible study. We are located at 385 Garrisonville Road right here in Stafford, Virginia. Uh, we are under the pastoral leadership of our senior pastor, Reverend Tori Williams. Um, I am Reverend, uh, Reverend Hutchings. Um, sitting beside me is Brother Hutchings. Um, you have Brother Thompson and um, our senior pastor, Reverend Tori Williams. Let us go ahead and um, go to God in prayer so that we can dive deep into the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this another night, another um, studies. God, we come to you anticipating great knowledge. Dear Father God, I'm asking you to just bless us with your presence and teach us from your word. Help us, Lord God, to impart what you want to go out and help us to grasp what you want us to grasp for our own lives. Thank you for everything that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Brother Thompson. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Hutchins. Like you said, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, last time we were before you, we uh, were just diving in to the First Samuel um, chapter 8 where Israel was demanding for a king, amen? And um, Samuel, the current judge, was, you know, getting older, and he had um, sort of assigned or, you know, gave his sons the, um, rule of, um, the role of being judge over Israel. But the um, um, elders of Israel stated that they weren't walking in his ways, so they wanted a king to, to you know, rule over them. And the last time, I guess the last part of the um, chapter eight we were, we were reading, Samuel was going to warn them that um, having a king would cause problems, would bring problems to them. So, you know, Samuel had went to the Lord for guidance and told him that, you know, the Lord told him that he wasn't, you know, that Israel wasn't coming against him. They were going against God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Samuel is trying to warn them, but I don't think they're going to take heed to his advice. Amen. Amen. Now we're going in to the end of um, chapter eight where Israel repeats their demand for a king. But before we go to that, if there's anything that you want to add, Pastor, before we go into that? The only thing, um, Samuel's two sons were doing the same identical thing that Eli's sons were doing. Mm -hmm. They were um, like rebels in the church, doing what they wanted to do, how they wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. So they were not following under their father's leadership. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. So as I stated, we're going into First Samuel chapter 8, um, starting at verse 19, where it's titled, Israel repeats the demand for a king. And um, we're going to be reading out of the King James Version, unless otherwise stated. Amen. So let's go into that, and I'll start at verse 19 and go to verse 22, where it's titled, Israel repeats the demand for a king. Amen. 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 The word reads, starting at verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we may also be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Amen. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> as we notice in verse 19, the people of Israel said they refused to obey. And I think it's first Samuel tells us in uh, Odea Ron 15 chapter, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Now, whenever they disobeyed and wouldn't listen to what God had told them to do, we know that there's going to be some harsh consequences coming. But we just, I think last week or the last time we were together, we read about the things that was coming. Mm -hmm. So we know beforehand, since they're not being obedient, there's going to be some hard times ahead. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not I'll read the commentary for 20, has here 20 and 22, um, where it states the words like all the nations again sound 
Omnius. Furthermore, the people's ex expectation of their leader was too grandiose. They thought a king would do everything for them. They saw the potential benefit, but they had not counted the cost. Amen. Then for 22, it states, the Lord's judge and prophet instructed everyone to return home to wait for God's leading on the matter. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Chris, if you read uh, 19 and 20, please. Amen. It says, uh, it says, Samuel carefully explained all the negative consequences of having a king. But the Israelites refused to listen. When you have an important decision to make, weigh the positives and the negatives carefully, considering everyone who might be affected by your choice. When you want something badly enough, you can be blinded to the potential consequences. Don't discount the possible negatives of getting what you want. It would be better to think things through beforehand than to have to fix a big mess later. And then it goes on to say, Israel was called to be a holy nation, separate from and unique among all others, Leviticus 20, 26. The Israelites' motive in asking for, for a king was to be like the nations around him. This was in total opposition to God's original plan. Their reasons for wanting a king were wrong and demonstrated a lack of faith. Often we let other values and actions dictate our attitude and behavior have you ever made a wrong choice because you wanted to be like everyone else mm -hmm. the values of your friends or heroes might pull you away from from what god says is right mm -hmm. when god's people want to be like unbelievers in certain ways they are heading for spiritual disaster amen amen, amen. amen. and it said it showed their lack of faith they didn't have enough faith to stand on what god had told them not only what he told them to look back to see what he had brought them through mm -hmm. because he brought them out of egypt mm -hmm. and then uh leviticus um what is it says here uh what is that 20 26 and ye are a holy nation unto me for i the lord am holy mm -hmm. and have served me from other people that you should be mine. In other words, he cut them off from the ones that were serving idol gods and everything. And that's the way that is with us Christians. He cuts us off away from the sin. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to us if we want to be that other nation. Mm -hmm. Remember our nation can be right in our home. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we want to be like the other sinful people, we want to do what they do and he has told us not to do the same way he told Israel what was going to happen, we too will have to suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he says, I'm holy. And he also said, be ye holy for I'm holy. Yeah. He knows that we're going to sin. He knows that. But he doesn't want us to turn completely. And we see Israel's point was, they really and truly, to me, they were not really believers. Right. Because if they believed in God the Father the way they should have, mm -hmm. they would have had some type of feelings. But what did they say? They wouldn't even listen to what they refused to listen to what Samuel had to say. Yeah. In other words, we don't want to hear that. Every time we try, look at Noah, when Noah was out there building that uh, ark for so many years. He was preaching. Yeah. It's going to rain. You better get yourself together. Turn your yeah. lives around. And they laughed at him. That old man up there doing that, talking about we've never seen rain a day in our life. And they haven't. <coughs> but you see, when God promised something, it's coming to fruition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems as if they forget what they forgot everything that um god brought them through everything it's like he, they forgot get coming out of israel um egypt they forget coming to the uh <coughs> the desert they, they forget them um getting the ten command they forget everything being fed by man they forget everything that god has brought them to to where they're at today and do I'm we not do the same thing today <coughs> yeah we do the same thing 
Yeah. The Ten Commandments didn't only apply to them back then. No. Mm -hmm. It applies to us today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the minute we get down and out, if we if we lose our job, if we lose a child, we lose a parent, we lose a husband, a wife, whatever, oh, we just fall down and just, oh, we, we, we cry out then. Mm -hmm. But the minute he allows us to get back on our feet, mm -hmm. God who? Yeah. I did this myself. Mm -hmm. I had to study for this exam. I had to do we put the personal I oh I didn't take it off the but we put that above God. We're doing mm -hmm. the same identical thing that they did back then. Mm -hmm. We try to look and, and find fault with them, but what he puts that there is for us to look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I like the reference, the reference here where it references Hosea um, chapter 13, um, I think it's verse uh, 11. And it's basically telling us, or, you know, in Hosea chapter 13 is the Lord referencing these times where it says, you know, I gave thee a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. And then the commentary states that God would, would have been Israel's king but they rejected him and the king they demanded what could not save them. So that's basically telling us that when we go against God's, you know, direction and, you know, as the Israelites, he tried to warn them, you know, gave them a judge to try to tell them what to do, but he still wouldn't get, would it basically went against his, you know, direction or guidance. So he was, he was basically angry with them. And that, that's what, it, to me, that's what it's stating in Hosea chapter 13 verse 11, that he was angry with them with their, you know, decision. And like we said before, that, you know, he gives us free will. So it was their decision to want a king to be like other nations. So he was angry with them and they're going to going to lose out because of his anger on them. He said, give them what they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, what did he say? He does not look upon sin. Mm -hmm. He would turn his back. Mm -hmm. And when you come up against a rock in a hard place, that's when you want to call out to him. Yeah. But he didn't put you. A lot of times we want to blame God for things or we want to blame the devil for it. But the ones we should be blaming is ourselves for going Amen. against what we know is right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Amen. Anything else on those verses before we move on? Amen. Going on to chapter 9 of 1 Samuel. Amen. It's titled Saul to be chosen as king. It's um, chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. And Brother Hutchins, you want to read those? Amen. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekachoreth, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man, and God and a godly, and there and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, was lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, "Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses." And he passed through the Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shakasha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalem, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of Benjamites, but they found them not. And five, and when they were come, and when they were come to the land of Zuth, Saul said to his servant that, that was with him, come and let us return, lest my father leave carrying for the asses and take thou for us and take thought for us Amen. Amen. i just want to point out before we start elaborating on that if we go from kish the son of then the son of and back in those days they didn't have say like my last name is williams they didn't mm -hmm. have surnames they had the names of their father Amen. okay all right, Amen. so um, uh, I'll read the commentary on 9 and 1. Amen. The commentary for 1 states, the men in Saul's genealogy 
are not widely attested or known in scripture apart from the relationship to Saul. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, the careful way the text traces the family tree through five generations suggests Saul came from a family of power and the tribe of Benjamin. Saul's comment in verse 21, notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. I think we should keep in mind that what it said that he came from a family of power. Mm -hmm. And we maybe that would help us to understand why he was afraid of losing that power. Mm -hmm. Okay, David. Okay, mm -hmm. would you do two, please? And for two it states as someone who was taller than any of the people, Saul looked goodly seemingly good leadership and material according to human perception yeah. uh, that's that's sort of a good statement where it says to human perception because as we know you know it wasn't necessarily good for them and then for four it states the fertile hill country of ephraim lay north of benjamin shalisha and shalom were districts northeast of gibeah and then it states, um, Zeus lay about five miles north of Gibeah, Saul's hometown. Amen. Amen. And, that, and I'll just go back to where it states where, you know, they sort of tried to, you know, I guess push him up or raise him up by saying, you know, a, a mighty man of power and that he looks good based on, you know, to human perception. So that's you know left out in the previous you know chapter where it showed that you know it may not be the king wasn't going to be good for him. So even though he's you know might have came from a line of of power and looked good to human eyes, you know not always good for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what do we always say? Man looks at what? The outward. And God looks at what? Heart. The heart. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So my, my commentary reads, um, we may think circumstances just happen to us, but as we learn from the story about Saul, God can use common occurrences to lead us. It is important to evaluate all situations as potential divine appointments designed to shape our lives. Think of all the good and bad circumstances that have affected you lately. And you see God's purpose in them. Perhaps he is building a certain quality in you or leading you to serve him in, new, in a new area. It also goes to say Saul's father sent him on an important mission to find their stray donkeys. Donkeys were all-purpose animals, the pickup trucks of the biblical world, used for transportation, hauling, and farming. They were considered a necessity. Even the poorest of families probably own one. To own many donkeys was a sign of wealth, and to lose them was a disaster. Saul's father was wealthy, and his many donkeys were evidence of that wealth. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. He came from, they said, a powerful family, so they had. Where a lot of other people didn't have, they had. Because I said, we keep, we're going to keep that in mind. And maybe you'll have to give the phone. This is going crazy today. Try blocking it, but it's not helping. Um, whenever he was running and chasing David down, wanted to kill him. He wanted to keep his power. Sometimes it's difficult for us to give up a job. It's difficult for us to give give up any position where we where we had made it. Saul had made it, and we will see where he thought that he was. He had made it. You know, sometimes if you give us an answer, we'll take a mile. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is what we're going to see here. Mm -hmm. We see that in you know today's time, where you know, with no matter what sort of position, whether it be in um, in you know football or in you know political aspects or just in any type of company, a lot of times you see. Whoever's in charge, maybe passing it down to their family member or you know someone they know closely, sort of keep that, you know, that leadership or, or that you know that title in the family. You know, basically, want to pass it down, so they want to keep that you know power, as you say there, how the you know 
you know, that the Saul's family, you know, came from that line. So you see that today where they try to keep it that line of power in you know in their family. Mm -hmm. I hate to be the bearer of that bad news, but we see that in church. Yeah. Yes. Now today it's uh husband and wife. Used to be the wife was a helpmate, she was uh helping out. But now it's both or it's passed on down to one of the children. Mm -hmm. But they try to keep it within that, and then they move into the place with all this uh, big gated fence and all. They know what they're doing. They're keeping their power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's theirs. It has now become their church. The people who attend there, their people. Mm -hmm. They take it out of God's hand. See, it's, as I tell you, well, I didn't say that, um, but the Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, there's nothing new on the other mm -hmm. side. It's just mm -hmm. that we are seeing it a little bit in a different, uh, through a different set of glasses or whatever, but it's the same. And this is why I tell people, you can't read this Bible and study this Bible just for the people back then. Right. Mm -hmm. It's meant for us right here and now. Mm -hmm. The same thing we see that's happening to Saul and happening to the people of Israel, it's the same thing. We want what other people have. Mm -hmm. Rather than try to make things better for ourselves, no, mm -hmm. we want what they have. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's like you said, and most of the time, uh, especially in the churches, um, a lot of them go in with great intentions. It's only when they start getting that money, yes. when they start getting that power, when they start yes. getting that fame, when they start getting that wealth, that they don't want to let it go. That's and right. then when they do everything not to let it go, now they're putting that before the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. And then see if they can get their wife to step up as a preacher. They can get their sons and their mm -hmm. daughters to step up. They can keep that money. That's right. It's all about the almighty dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible said we need money. But what he says is the love of money, the love of it, is the root of all evil. That's right. And this yeah. is what we see. We can't put it outside on jobs and everything. Start right there, a place where it's supposed to be holy. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and I like how uh, what you said, you know, we, can, we use this for today's time, not not back in that time, because they just said Saul was the goodest of the good. So he yes, started out with yes. great intentions. Yes, he did. So yes, that's, he did. that's the lesson that we, we should be getting from this right now. Yes, yes. The same way he it turned in his head, it turns the heads today. Yeah. Same that's identical right. thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Have anything else on those verses before we move on? Amen. Going on to verse 6 of First Samuel in chapter 9, it is titled The Servant's Advice. Amen. Going through from 6, verse 6 through 10. Amen. And verse 6 starts, it reads, And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honor, honorable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let's go thither. Peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here a hand, the fourth part of a shekel of silver that that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. Verse 9, before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. In verse 10 it says, then said Saul to his servant, well said, come, let us go. So that so they went in, unto the city where the man of God was. Okay, before we elaborate, <clears throat> just keep in mind you're going to see that uh, throughout the Bible in the Old Testament. They start talk about the seer rather than say the prophet, they say the seer. So just remember that's one of the same, a mouth mm -hmm. mouthpiece for God. Amen. 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 
in the commentary for those verses, starting with six, it states, the man of God was Samuel, though the text does not reveal this until verse 14. The text may subtly suggest that Saul really did not know about Samuel, whereas his intention attended and all Israel did. Some interpreters identify the city as Ramah, but this is uncertain. And then it says, for seven, Saul, let, Saul felt it inappropriate to approach the man of God without a present. After all, the prophet's good counsel might result in the discovery of the lost donkeys leading to his father's financial gain. Or perhaps Saul thought Samuel might expect a reward. The, for nine, it states, seer describes a person who sees the things of God. Prophet means God called one. The text clarifies that the term prophet replaced seer by the time this paragraph was written. But the two terms describe the same office. Amen. Amen. Like you stated. Amen. Amen. Brother Chris, I know yours is similar, but would you read, um, read yours, please? Amen. The city where the servant said the prophet lived was probably Ramah, where Samuel had moved after the Philistine battle near Shiloh. Saul's lack of knowledge about Samuel showed his ignorance of spiritual matters. Saul and Samuel even lived in the same territory. Some may have been chosen by uh, Saul may have been chosen by God as Israel's first king, but his lack of spiritual knowledge would plague him all his life. Mm. Amen. Amen. Now that's that's a mouthful right there. He may have had. He sent, let's just say this way, he came from a well-to-do family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what he had was stuff and things. things yes. But no mm -hmm. real knowledge of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because maybe had he had that real knowledge, we wouldn't see the occurrences going to happen down the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because um, sometimes <laughs> Sometimes you take a, a person who's not used to anything. Yeah. And you give them two wooden nipples to rub together. Yes. My Lord, my Lord. You yes, have something right. on your hand right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even God can't touch them. That's right. Mm -hmm. So this we can learn a lot through Saul. Yes. Remember we keep saying God will use anybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. He'll give you that opportunity. But it has to be up to that individual to be willing to be used by God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to do yeah. like Ru uh, Lucifer, want to rise above and try to do it our way, mm -hmm. regardless of how he, what, wherever he takes us to, however he elevates us. Mm -hmm. Be humble and keep a low profile. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But but he gave them exactly what they wanted, right? Because oh, yes, nobody uh, asking Samuel to be the king, <laughs> because you know that's why they wanted the king. There were certain things that you know laws they had to live by that they didn't that's want right. to live by. That's they right. wanted to pick and choose which ones you know they abided by. That's right. You know, they they hey hey Samuel, can you be our king? Now Samuel, you you doing the same thing the Lord putting on us. So they got exactly <laughs> what they wanted. <laughs> and another thing, Samuel, you're too old now. You have to right. get out of the way. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at stature. You know, looking at um, how uh, the tall Saul was and, you know, um, above everyone else. And, and it's like the way you dress and how you look and how you yes. carry yourself. Yes. You know, people look at that nowadays. Sure. It's the it's same true. thing as you say, same nothing thing. new under the sun. You see somebody dress and, um, you know, shoulders back and, you know, you're going to be, I want to be like that. You know, you know, you don't want to be like the one that is humbling in um, rags going to church. <laughs> or by the same token, if a person walks in church mm -hmm. and they don't look like you, you, you yes. don't want to be near them. Yes. Yeah. You know, what are they coming in here? We've made uh, it. <laughs> I remember back in the days, you gotta have the hat to match the dress to match the bag to go to church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
just like you say, you know, relating that today, it doesn't matter, you know, sort of what y'all were saying, you know, I can relate to sort of basketball. If somebody's tall, they just, hey, put them on the court. Mm-hmm. Somebody fast, throw them out there on the field. <laughs> you know, it right. doesn't matter what they can do. It just matter, you know, what they look like or what they seem they can do. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's true. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> You have anything else on those verses for six through ten? We move on. Amen. And then going on to maidens give directions. It's first Samuel chapter nine, verse eleven through thirteen. You read that, Brother Hutchins. Amen. Uh, verse eleven. And as they went up to the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them, is the seer here and they answered them and said he is he is behold he is before you make haste now for he came today to the city for there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place and 13 as soon as ye be ye become into the city ye shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat for the people will not eat until he come because he does bless the sacrifice and afterwards they eat that he be that that he eat that be bitten now therefore get you up for about this time you shall find him mm-hmm. and, uh, and the commentary on that reads uh, uh social customs restricted the amount of public contact between men and maidens however such a question was appropriate The meeting of the women as they were going out to draw water suggests a late afternoon or early evening time. Um, And 913, blessing the sacrifice was part of Samuel's priestly role. Amen. 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 Anything else on those verses? We're going to go on to you know Samuel and Saul meet verse 14 through 19. Amen. Amen. Going on to 14. And they went up into the city, and when they came and and when they were come into the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Samuel before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the hand out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people because their cry is come unto me. In seventeen and when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. In 19, and Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me into the high place, for ye shall eat with me today and tomorrow, and I will let thee go and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord shall direct that here. Amen. Who is coming? This is uh, verse 16. Tomorrow about this time, I will send a man. You notice whenever Paul was knocked off of that horse, that he told the same thing to Ananias. Mm-hmm. The people are coming in. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what we are going through, if we depend on God, he will lead us and guide us, and he will order our steps, and he will direct our way. Yeah. Now, what we do, <coughs> excuse me, after he's done that, that's up to us. Amen. 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 Uh, I'll read the commentary for where it says, starting at 15, where it states, the word told in his ear is literally uncovered the ear, a common idiomatic expression and it states for 16 anointing depicted setting someone apart for God's appointed service especially kings priests and prophets captain was an early term used to describe Saul David and Solomon 
first um the reference is first kings 135 though it also denoted others in authority amen the, then it states the phrases have i have looked upon my people and their cry is come unto me recall god's remembrance of israel and bondage in egypt just before he used moses to free them it says these freight um phrases suggest god was beginning another day of redemption Amen. and for 17 it states the hebrew um verb behind rain normally means restrain or retain and it may hint at the future negative consequences of Saul's king kingship. Others suggest the term may imply Saul would gather a fairly scattered and disjointed group of Israelites into a nation. Mm. And for 18 states, Saul drew near to Samuel but did not recognize him as his question reveals. It says the text may again provide a hint at the negative direction Saul's kingdom would take. All Israel knew Samuel was a prophet of the Lord, but Saul didn't even recognize him. And then, then for 19, it states, go up before me was a way of showing honor and respect. All that is in thine heart was probably much more than Saul anticipated hearing. He had just wanted to see Samuel to inquire about the lost donkeys. <laughs> oh, he didn't want to inquire about the Lord. He wanted to inquire about um, the donkeys. Uh -huh. Those donkeys were important to him. Those donkeys yeah. were important to his family. Yeah. Who was God? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. But as I stated in that contest, you know, that's sort of showing maybe the beginning of something bad to happen. You know, when you, you know, you're looking for, a fi as it as stated in the previous um, verses, where he's, those donkeys are financial gain for his family. And as you mm -hmm. say, it's not, you know, you know, thinking about God at that point. So, mm -hmm. wondering who who you're sort of appointing at this know. time. Amen. Do you have anything else for those verses, fourteen through nineteen? Sorry, I'm not really in it tonight. Uh, landline stuff and the cell phone started. Mm -hmm. See how Satan is. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I have uh, 18, it says, <clears throat> but it goes over into 21, but I'll read it. It says, Saul looked promiscuously at his circumstances and did not realize the resources he now had with God's help. Uh, he was so intent on finding the lost animals that he did not understand that soon he would have all the wealth of Israel at his disposal. Mm -hmm. Remember that God sees you in light of your potential. The more you rely on him for strength, the more you will realize the potential that God sees in you and created you to fulfill. Mm -hmm. Don't let your past experiences or present pressures keep you from seeing yourself as God sees you and experiencing the new kind of life you can enjoy in the light of his available resources. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do I always say? Let go and let go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why we have to let stuff and things go. And oh. I also say he wa he wants you to have whatever because he created this stuff. He put it here for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he wants you to have it, not it to have you. you. Yeah. And once you get it, then, oh, Lord, I just want to thank you for this. I want to thank you. Mm -hmm. Give him the praise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give him the glory. Yeah. Also, yeah. don't forget about the ones who help you along the way. That's yeah. right. When you couldn't help yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you might believe that you're going somewhere for, for for your purpose and God have a whole different plan in mind for you. So when when you're walking in in with God, just prepare yourself to always accomplish his will, no matter what it is, because his vision, he the the the, the word of God says his plans are way greater than your plans. You know, and so you just have to avail yourself because sometimes you you sell yourself short. You think that you 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 are you can't accomplish something, but would God have you ordained for greater things? So just like when He told, um, look at Gideon and say, "You man of um, of valor," and Gideon is hiding under the cellar. You know, he he's hiding under there, but God saw his potential. 
you know, um, Saul is walking up looking for the donkey, but God is, is getting ready to turn him into a king. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But a lot of times God will use us. He knows. God knows what we're going to do. As mm -hmm. I said before, God wants us to see what we are going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. See, if we are going to walk in righteousness, yeah. or if we are going to walk in um, the midst and grab on to material things. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. we could only remember, all of those things are going to pass away. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. only, only God yes. will be yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he takes that last breath away, he's going to be there. But it's only us to determine where we're going to serve eternally mm -hmm. or where we're going to live for eternal life. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why the word, the word says he knows, God knows the plans that he has for you. You don't know God's plans that what he has for you. God knows the plans. So you have to let go and trust and believe. When you walk with the Lord, you're going to walk right. Mm -hmm. And will we stumble? Of course we will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all sin. When yeah. you get the holy rollers, they are different from yeah. us. They don't sin. They don't sin. <laughs> But we all sin. Yeah. And this is why we have the option. We can repent. That's right. And he will bring us right back again. Yes. It's like you say, if you if you fall, you gotta get back up. Come like on now. Fall, get yes. back up. That's right. That's right. Don't stay down there and keep wallowing in it. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I, and I sort of had that question earlier to myself when I was, you know, looking at this, you know, ch this chapter, because, you know, I'm sort of possibly realizing the answer, because when I think about what they're doing, even though they're, they go to God for, for guidance and sort of um, bringing them a king, he, you know, he said to them that a king will bring them, you know, those, those different things where, they, you know, appoint captains over them and, you know, re they will reap the harvest and make his instruments of war, make them his instruments of war. And instruments of chariots. So I think it's sort of like you said, uh, like you stated before, is that, you know, where you state, be careful what you ask for. Because even mm -hmm. though, you know, they're asking, you know, the Lord for this, this, this may not be what he wants for them. So he's, like you say, he, he's given, sometimes he gives us what we ask for, but, you know, it may not be, you know, for our best. So that's mm -hmm. sort of what I'm seeing, in, you know, in this sort of particular, in these chapters here. And, and, yeah. and, and what man can do, what God can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No man. Amen. That's a big Amen. that's some big steps to try to walk behind, right? Yes. You better let him lead you. That's right. <laughs> and 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 remember that a uh, 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 king of flesh is going to need to acquire things. You know, acquire status, acquire things, and it's going to acquire them off the backs of the people that are serving him. But the Amen. king of kings. Don't he made everything? That's he don't right. need to acquire nothing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You Amen. know, so you what you when you're serving a a, a a king of flesh, you gonna have to work hard. You go, he yeah, he he gonna send you to his army, but you gonna have to fight his battle for him. But when you serve the king of kings, the king of kings fight your battle for you. But they didn't want a king of kings. You know, yeah. they wanted what. The other man had. That's mm, right. They want to. That's just like I said with us. Yes. Sometimes we are not satisfied with what God has allowed us to obtain. Mm -hmm. We see somebody else over there with a house just a little bit bigger than ours. We want that house. Yeah. We want their car. We want what they had. Yeah. Not saying, God, I thank you for well, where you that. brought me from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't always have this. That's right. Yeah. But I want what they have. And mm -hmm. not only that, that brings about envy. That brings about jealousy. Yeah. Yeah. And that brings about destruction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I see that's the sort of difference between in the earlier, you know, books and chapters where, you know, going to God and asking, you know, what he wants you to do and then or and what's happening here, they 
they want a king and they're going to say, basically going to God say, we want a king now, appoint us a king. So mm -hmm. just between asking him for direction and asking him to give us what mm -hmm. we want. They went to the man of God. You didn't go to God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We didn't right. see one time where they prayed out to God. That's right. Mm -mm. He went to Samuel. Yes, yeah, Samuel. The man of God. Yeah. yeah. They didn't even respect God enough to call out to him. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we will go to a pastor, mama, daddy, sister, brother, and tell them our troubles and what we want before we go to God. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, steal away mm -hmm. and go to the Lord. Because mm -hmm. everything that we want is not always good for us. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if we want something, I don't care what it is. Go to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's why he gave us children, I think. We can learn from our children. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Because our kids, they will come up, Mommy, I want this, Mom, Daddy, I want that. They're asking you. They're not going outside and asking someone out in the street. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what these people were doing. They were asking a man of God. Mm -hmm. But we didn't see where they cried out to him. Mm -hmm. Right. They were shunning him. But even when they... What does he know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they asked the man of God, and when the man of God gave them the warning, if the yeah. Bible says they demand it, they repeat the demand. Yeah. Look, I don't care what is going to happen. Just give us what we want. Aren't we because, like that? Aren't because our like neighbors that? have it. The people over there, they have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why should we uh, worship a God we haven't seen? Mm -hmm. When they see their God, and Keep an eye out for it and just watch it. A lot of times when people are sinning, they're prospering. Mm -hmm. It's temporal. Mm -hmm. So you have seen it. They're prospering. Mm -hmm. Then it makes you say, okay. you know, I'm worshiping God and they're doing better than me. Mm -hmm. But you see what God says, be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wait. Wait for your change. Your change is going to come. Amen. Because the same way he bless others, he'll bless you. Yeah. And see, now Satan allows, uh, God allows Satan to bless us with a little something, something too. Mm -hmm. And it's only lasts for a short period of time. Yes. But yes. whatever God blesses us with. It's permanent. And if we are, you know, if we are good servants over. Yes, towards over, yes. Now, if we are good servants over what he has given us, there too is when we have to pray and Lord show us the way. Show us what you want us to do here. Mm -hmm. yes. There's nothing too hard that we can't play uh pray to God for. That's right. He said, I good I created good and evil. Yeah. So he knows how to handle whatever there is out here. Mm -hmm. But give him that honor, give him that respect mm -hmm. and go to him. Mm -hmm. It's all right to go to a man of God, but you better know how to talk to the Lord for yourself. That's right. This is like one of the first keeping up with the Joneses. They they got a king. I want a king too. They 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 got stuff. We want stuff too. That's right. That's right. And the people you see keeping up with the Joneses, they don't come to. But the Bible, I'll go through the Bible. There is a way to seem right unto men, but the end thereof is death. Is destruction. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So. <laughs> Yeah, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Amen. Amen. Going on to verse 20 of First Samuel chapter 9, where's the title Israel's Desire for Saul? I'm going to go from verse 20 through 27, Brother Hush. Amen. Verse 20 And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them. For they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? It is not on thee and on all thy father's house. And Saul answered and said, Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? And Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor. And made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden 
which were about 30 persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the, the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder and that which was upon it and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which is left, set it before thee and eat. For unto this time has it been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were and when they were came when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And 27, and as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the, bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But, but stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Amen. 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 I may show thee the word of God that he hearkened to. Let's go back to 20. Um, they no we notice here in the Bible that they use donkeys and asses interchangeably. Here mm -hmm. they didn't say, uh, I died because he said God asses. He told them that uh, what they would set out to look for, they were found. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't that they were found. The Lord pointed that out to them. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 But I like the 21. So I said, um, I'm not, and I'm not a big of the smallest of the tribe. Mm -hmm. We know that was uh, Rachel, a baby boy. Amen. So there, it sounds, it gives you a little um, inkling there that he was trying to be a little humble mm -hmm. in that one verse. Mm -hmm. But when God has chosen you for something, he has called you out or singled you out to do his will, his way. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you the commentary for those verses. Okay, uh, for, let's see, 20, it says, <clears throat> On whom is all the desire of Israel could mean, for whom is every desired thing in Israel? Is it not for you? The Hebrew word here translated desire refers to treasures. Uh, 21, whichever rendering the best in verse 20, the language was far more affirming than Saul's anticipated smallest well described benjamin which occupied a relatively small territory and furthermore faced potential extension after war with israel's other tribes in the days of the judges least also means smallest in size this may be better sense in light of, of verse one uh, 22 it says the parlor was probably a room for sacrificial meals connected with the high place. Uh, 24, the Hebrew term behind shoulder means leg, and either way would constitute a large choice portion of meat. Uh, 25, uh, presumably, presumably this was the home where Samuel was staying. The rooftop was typically flat, and it was a place where people could enjoy cool evening breezes. The subject of conversation is not known. The LXX adds the words, they prepared a bed for Saul on the roof and he slept, a natural thing for a host to arrange for his guest. And 27, Samuel revealed to Saul that he had a particular message for him. Perhaps Saul anticipated some sort of prophetic send-off in light of Samuel's words in verse 19. All right. Yeah. 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 Anything to add to this? I don't see anything in particular here. Well, my, my commentary reads uh, 921. It says, 
why are you take it's saying why are you talking like this to me Saul's outburst reveals a problem he would face repeatedly feeling inferior like a leaf tossed about by the wind Saul facilitated between his worries and his conviction everything he said and did was selfish because he was worried about himself for example Saul said it said his family was the least important in the smallest tribe in Israel but back in 9 1 says his father was wealthy a wealthy influ, influ, influential man the tribe of Benjamin was the smaller because they were nearly wiped out as a punishment for their immorality see Judges 19 21 Saul didn't want to face the responsibility God had given him later Saul kept some some war plunder that he shouldn't have taken and tried to blame his soldiers claiming that they had really taken it to sacrifice to God so that's getting a little further into it so mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, my commentary here I find very interesting it says meanwhile the Lord had revealed to Samuel that Saul was on his way and that he was the divine choice of king this does not mean that Saul satisfied God's ultimate requirements but only that he was graciously Letting the people have their own way. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. So we will see that. Yeah. We will see as we we go on that there is no spirituality in Saul whatsoever, mm-hmm. and he knew it. Mm-hmm. He knew it, but we will find that out when we get over there with him and David. Amen. Amen. You don't want to stop there. It's ten six fifty seven. Um, Yes. And then, so we'll stop there at verse 27, the, um, basically ending chapter 9. So we'll pick up in chapter 10 on Sunday. Amen. So you know, as we you know, dive deeper, we'll be ready to go into chapter 10 of uh, First Samuel. I guess I'll turn back over to Reverend Hutchins. All right. Um, over to you, Brother Hutchins. Um, I would just like to comment on, you know, uh, Samuel laid out the warning to these people and you know what we need to ask the Lord for every day daily is wisdom wisdom sometimes we're so focused on a decision we want to make that we don't think about all the alternatives or all the consequences down the line on that decision we make so it's always you know it, it should be second nature you know any decision we make we want to take it to the Lord and act his wisdom on that Amen. Um, Brother Thompson Amen. Well, I'll sort of look at that. You know, what he said sort of reminded me of a previous, you know, a book that we read where it talked about being content with what God has for you. So, you know, to me, that's sort of what was sort of, you know, telling me is that, you know, during this sort of period, you know, the Israelites were content with what God had for them, you know, mm-hmm. just, you know, being the Lord. So they want, still wanted that, that king and wanted to be like other, you know, tribe and nations. So they weren't being content with, you know, just having, I guess, God and the Lord, you know, as their as their guide or guider and director. So, I guess we just got to be content with what the Lord, you know, gives us, gives us, and what He provides for us every single day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Pastor. The Bible tells us in Scripture, "Don't forget the former things." Mm-hmm. And I will say what He's saying to us: Don't forget where I brought you from. That's right. Mm-hmm. Even from us being children up to this point, don't forget it. Once in a while, just sit down and meditate on how good he's been to you mm-hmm. and where he's brought you from. Mm-hmm. Because if we, a lot of people tell you, oh, forget it, you're not supposed to remember it. No, you forget. You'll turn around and make the same mistakes all over yeah. again. That's right. Mm-hmm. And it's God who has brought us from conception, birth, to this point. So let's just remember the Lord and where he has brought us from. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, There you have it. Let us go to God in prayer to ask his blessings on this word. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God. 
for helping us to push through their father god even though the devil may be fighting but you stand with us lord god and i'm asking you dear father god to just continue blessing your words thank you for everything that you have taught us tonight and i'm asking you lord god to just help us to hold on to it to understand it and to implement it in our lives help us to always listen to you always ask of you and always wait on you and be of good courage in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. thank you so much for joining us join us again on sunday morning at 9 30 a.m for the continuation of this bible study and after um, um sunday morning sunday school at 9 30 a.m join us at 10 30 a.m for the sunday morning sermon and um so that you that can carry you through the week um join us on tuesday for our prior line and um, prior changes things. Um, there has been great things happening on the prior line. Pray with us and stand with us. The number to call is 605-313-5388 with an access code of 379088 pounds. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and see you right back here next week, Wednesday at 6 p.m. sure for another Bible study. Um, thank you again, and I hope something said or done here will move in your life in a mighty way. Have a blessed evening. Amen. Yeah.